It's new product time, Lady Ada. Here it is, and new product song, new product time, new product. Time. Okay. So okay. I have a, a couple updates before we, uh, that, this, this new product related. Uh, real quick, we did an update to the CC3000 library. Yes. That is our Internet of Things. Two things board. I added. One is I added um, fast printing. So the way we were doing printing before is we would send one byte per packet, which is as bad as it sounds. So now it sends a full string as a packet, so it's like 10 to 20 times faster for sending uh, data, which should speed stuff up. I, I only released it with one byte part because I wanted it worked and I wanted to get it out there, but we've actually been trying to port a Twitter client to it. And to do that, we had to have it be a little bit faster um, yeah. for this board. We also added UDP and a UDP example, connecting to uh, NTP network time protocol servers, pool.ntp.org, to get the current time. It's actually pretty easy. You just connect to NTP, send data, receive it. It's, it's actually very lightweight, and you yeah. can uh, get the current time, so you don't need a real-time clock. You can just keep track of it uh, okay. using Wi-Fi. Next up, um, again, uh, the Motor Shield is in stock, so I wanted to include this. So we updated the um, Motor Shield uh, library. Yeah, there's a reference now. Yeah, there's a reference now, and this is our new version of the Motor Shield. This is Motor Shield 2.0. Lovely. Yeah, let me um, I'll get over, over there here. and look at that. This is our new motor shield. And um, I thought it'd be really fun to just show the motor shield since we just uh, got a batch of these out of the pick and place machine. Just show them what, what it looks like. Up. Yeah, this is what it looks like um, as they come out. So they come on these. Okay, you know, focus, you know. focus. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, one day we should maybe get a light with this. Yeah, I'm working on that. But um, yeah, you can see they come in a panel of two by three. And we break them off and test them, and that's how they uh, show up. They get pick and place six at a time. Yeah, so that's a nice sheet of motor shields. Yes. All right. <coughs> Next up, uh, perhaps the star of the show tonight. It is this beautiful screen. Yay! Just look at the screen. Yes, this um, is a nice I'm screen. I'm just going to go through this. We did take some nice photos. We should take advantage of them. Yeah. And then here you look at the large size photos. What's interesting is these are actually photos of the TFTs. They're not photoshopped. Almost everybody yeah, we else don't photo out there the photoshops what the screen looks like. This is actually yeah, what it looks like. And I want to show um, zoomed in. So the reason these are gigantic photos. So when I zoom in, you'll be able to see. You can see the pixels. You'll be able to see the pixels. So yeah, the only thing is, is that because it's a real TFT, it's slightly wide. Yeah. I mean, it depends on how people see it on their screen. Yeah. yeah. So let's uh, go to the overhead. Okay, so this is the screen, and I'm going to... Yeah, so like over a video, like look how beautiful that looks. You can actually, you can actually see it. Yeah, that's a nice photo of a butterfly on some flowers. So it's a 2.2 inch TFT, but it's a 320 by uh, 240, so it's, it's nice, you know, fairly high resolution for such a small screen. I mean, it's not like a retina display, but it's still pretty good. And uh, on the back, We've got a micro SD socket, so you can uh, store images on it. You can also just, you know, display it, you know, squares, rectangles, triangles, whatever we have in our GFX library um, is supported, and it's attached to a, um, a PCB, and then you can use a SPI, four wires, plus a reset pin, basically, to uh, control it. So there you go. So what's the interface to control it? It's four-wire SPI. Four-wire SPI. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, look how great that looks. I mean, it's it's stunning. This is um, I think one of my yeah, favorite new so products. Like really close and see the pixels. Yeah, you might have to zoom in a little bit so it focuses. There you go. Look at that. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It has a it's pretty good angle too. I mean, it's not IPS, but it's yeah. it's pretty good. Um, someone wants to know: Is there any um, easy to use graphic driver chips that would allow animations on that screen? You can, you can do animations, it's just SPI. It, it, I mean, you have to use hardware SPI. You can yeah. do animations, it's just you have to have a processor that can handle it. But it's not, it's not for, for this, it's designed for basically like basic graphics with an Arduino. If you yeah. want to do video, get a Raspberry Pi and a TV. Okay. So that's the best thing to do. All right, next up. Look at this little heating pad. It's so cute. Look at this thing. It's this little, little thing that heats up things. Yeah, in fact, I've even plugged it in. Yeah. And it's heating up right now. It's um, it's actually made by like the same company that makes their like LED um, 
ribbon that we yeah. use, and it's um, it's a stainless steel fiber. Oh, there you go. It's a stainless steel fiber that's woven into like a, a gauze, which is you know whatever, not, not probably not cotton, it's like a polyester gauze. And uh, let's see if I can move that over here. Um, so you can see there's a sort of a, a weave. You can see my hand through it, but there's still like this weave of metal. And um, you just basically power it, and it's just it's just a metal that's you know uh, heats up effectively, but doesn't get so hot. You know, doesn't uh, the resistance doesn't change. It's very stable. So when you give it five volts, it draws about like half an amp to an amp, and it heats up um, depending it, on the voltage. Is it contained in something that's water resistant? Um, this is you know it's it's kind of uh, it's in Kapton tape, which is thermal. It's not waterproof. I wouldn't dunk this under water, but it's fine for like basic use. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't put it in a wet environment at all. But um, you know, if you want to do that, there are you know you'd get like a, a plastic, completely in yeah. encased like UL listed heater. This okay. is just for basic heating applications. Um, so, got my and you can wrap it around stuff, which is nice. So. I can wrap it around here and see it getting heated up. So it's a little warm. So you could use this and a temperature sensor to turn it on and off to control it. You could yeah. um, uh, high altitude ballooning. Folks use this to keep components from freezing. Yes, yeah, so this gets up to like with five volts. This gets, seems to get up to like 40 C or so. Yeah. Um, you can calculate that out in Fahrenheit if you want. Um, but, uh, could I put safe? a bunch of those in a jacket and a minty boost and, and warm myself yeah, up? Yeah, you don't even need a minty boost. I would just use, um, like three or four AA batteries. Wow. And just connect it directly. I mean, there's no reason to have a boost converter because it doesn't really matter what the voltage is. You can actually run up to, up to 12 volts. Yeah. If you have a 12 volts, it actually gets a little painfully hot. Okay. So it's it's it can run up to 12 volts, but I wouldn't put it against skin at 12 volts because I was I was playing with that and I was like, ow, this is like really yeah. toasty. Every winter I go to this um, big event called Freezing Man. Yeah. It's in the middle of Antarctica. And no, they uh, have a Freezing Man. Do they really? Oh, I was yeah. just making that up. No, there's, there's one. <laughs> okay. It's really cool. I haven't attended one. Yeah. Does it does a snowman melt at the end or does it? How, no, if it's, it's the opposite, it's it gets a, bigger, right? It's on a. I'm trying to remember if it's on a. Not an, It's like an ice ice lake. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep moving along here. All right, so next up, um, we have some RFID stuff. Uh, yeah. I'll keep it on the overhead. Um, we have these little leather RFID things. Yeah. Look at this. I can show this off. These, these, little, these are very cute. It's just, it's just a, um, a RFID tag, but encased in a little leather key fob. I just thought it was kind of nice. You could, la you could laser it. You can laser engrave these. We, yeah. we had them not engraved, so you can engrave them as you want. Um, yeah, what type of... Uh, RFID tags are in here. These are all my fair classic 1Ks. So these work very well with our RFID staff, our yeah. um, NFC shield. You can write to them. They have a unique ID, a four byte ID. This is a nail oh, version. Yeah, we're going to get to the nail now. Well, I mean, it's, okay. the same, it's uh, basically the same idea that says the. Um, okay, but these are, these are super weird and cool because they're nails, okay? <laughs> you just love those nails. Yeah, though. this is a neat idea. So you could go and put these all over the place and through drywall. And, um, or the ground, I think. Or the ground. Geocaching. Or yeah, something. geocaching. You can do all sorts yeah, of things. I'll probably with put them in a plant or something. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what they're for, but yeah, they're basically this um, nail. I mean, when you, you have RFID nails, everything in the world looks like an RFID hammer. No. Um, Mixing up my quotes tonight a little bit. Yeah, this has the uh, the my fair tag is the head. Yeah. So that's why it has like a large, kind of like hammery surface here. It's actually the tag itself, which you can kind of see, and that um, is the head of the nail. And that, that's the same exact thing that's inside here, too. So, you know, they just pop it out and they put it in this leather, leather key fob. Yeah. If, if you were, like, a super spy, you could put these on the road and then the car would get tagged and then you would get the diamonds back before the code is needed or I don't know. Um, all right. You're reading too many one-time pad Yeah. <laughs> all right, next up. Um, we've got uh, these uh, big LCD panels. LEDs. Sorry, LED panels. At what point does an LCD turn into an LED? Just when it gets 
a certain size. Uh, totally different technologies. Because yeah. <laughs> if you got a bunch of them together. Well, LCDs usually have LED backlights. Yeah. But it's a different thing. The LCDs turn on yeah. off to let light through. Yeah, these are beautiful photos. Yeah, these are great photos. Okay, so let's try to put this on the overhead. I don't know what's going to happen here. Okay. Well, yeah. I have two pieces of paper. Oh, yeah, there's another piece of paper right here, right underneath. Can you grab it? Yeah, here you go. Okay. Okay, you're going to diffuse that. So here is the, you can see it flickering because it's uh, the refresh rate's colliding with the refresh rate of the camera. It's not actually flickering. Well, I mean, it is, but humans can't see it. Yeah. But um, it's a, a 32 by 32 pixels, and it's full RGB, and it's fairly large. Um, it's larger than the other 32 by 32 we had, although it's the same wiring and everything. Um, but it's less expensive because it's less dense. Um, those ones are extremely common, um, so it's only like seventy five dollars for one thousand twenty four RGB LEDs, which is a pretty good deal. And um, you can kind of like this is running actually on an Arduino, and you can kind of draw basic graphics and stuff with an Arduino on this. Um, technically, they can be chained. Um, on the back, there is we call um, this one the Rave Death Star. Yeah, this is there's an input and an output on each one, and technically they can be chained, although uh, an Arduino does not have enough memory for it. Maybe a Dewey would, but we haven't ported the code, uh, so you can see the arrow. Um, so they can be chained. They can be um, used with our um, LED driver core that we have in the store. It's a little expensive, but it has the FPGA stuff on it to drive like, you know, a couple dozen of these each way. It can do um, 1,000 by 700 pixels, so that's like divide by 32. It's a lot. It's like a couple hundred panels, I think, of these of these guys. And it's uh, a lot of pixels. And on the back, there's little drivers. You have to PWM them by hand. So yeah, you do need a fairly good processor to do so. But uh, you know, again, we have Arduino code ready. And some people have written code for the uh, propeller. We have some FPGA example code, I think, also somebody wrote yeah. um, for the uh, DEO Nano. So it's, you know, if you want to play with these, it's, it's, you can do it with a microcontroller, just you can't control more than like one panel at a time. If you have an FPGA, you could do multiple panels. Yeah. If you're that's, how, that. that's how uh, like the store displays work and all these big walls, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, each one of these little guys is an RGB LED. That's cool. Lots of LEDs. So yeah, this is, so it's like people were asking, like, why don't you have like an 8x8 LED matrix thing? And I'm like, man, for like the same price, I can just like, you can yeah. get this gigantic display. It's huge. And this is also used in, a, we have like a Bluetooth yo-yo thing that uses a display this size. So yeah. these are kind of cool. And the fact that they're using all these gigantic uh, LED walls means it's not too expensive to um, yeah. have these in the store okay. for individual. That was New Products Lady. Yeah.